this is Mr. T with another math tutorial and we're continuing our discussion about systems. On our previous lesson we talked about systems of equations, finding solutions, uh, coordinate pairs that solve a set of equations. And today we're going to talk about system of inequalities. In real world applications uh, it's frequently the situation where we're not dealing with exact quantities but we have constraints on a particular problem. So for example in a little uh, scenario that we have here we're going to do a field trip and we have to plan transportation and we have a choice between cars and vans and in this example each car can handle four passengers and each van can handle six passengers and our constraints are that we have at most eight drivers so meaning we can have at most eight vehicles and we have to carry at least 24 people so these inequality statements here mean that we could get by with theoretically less than eight drivers so we could do two drivers five drivers whatever is required and we could have capacity for more than 24 people we just have to handle at least so we're going to solve that by writing a set of inequalities that uh, deal with this. So when we look at the problem, if we let C be the number of cars and V be the number of vans, so we're going to use C and V here. So this inequality is going to be cars plus vans have to be less than or equal to 8 because each one requires a driver. And then to calculate the number of people for each car, we have to multiply it by 4. So the number of cars we have times 4 will be how many passengers the cars will carry. And 6 times the number of vans will be the number of vans that, I mean, number of people the vans carry. And the combined of that has to carry at least 24 people. So that means we need it to be greater than or equal to 24. And we're looking for solutions that will make both of those situations, both of those constraints, true. To do that, we will be using what we learned in the last lesson about graphing the inequalities on a coordinate plane. So we will have a boundary line for each inequality, and we will be shading the portion that makes, makes each inequality true. And when it's a system, what we're going to be looking for are where the shadings for each of the constraints or each of the inequalities overlap. So let's look at our car problem here. Now these were the two inequalities that we wrote. I've done them in different colors. So let's graph this first one in blue. We can use our hide and seek method. So if we hide the V, we have C is 8. So, that's, oops, unfortunately it's off my uh, graph here. It didn't plan well. And if I hide the C, my V is 8, so my V intercept is up here at 8. So this axis is V, this axis is C. So we can connect those with a line. And we want values less than that, so if we pick a test point here of 0, 0, 0 plus 0 is less than 8, so we are shading over on this side of our inequality, our boundary line. And we'll keep going all the way down here. Now if we look at our uh, other constraint, our other inequality, if we use hide and seek again, if we hide the V, we've got C, we would divide by 4, so we've got C is 6. And if we hide the C, we've got 6V equals 24, so V is 4. And again, we can draw a line through those. Now this time, if I put 0, 0 in as my test point, so if I use this as my test point again, we would have 0 greater than 24, that's false, so we are going to shade on this side of the line. So our solutions are the part where we have the cross shading or the two color shading. The solutions are in here. Now in this pro problem we should add two other constraints. Uh, we cannot have negative number of cars, so C should be 
uh, greater than or equal to zero, and V cannot be negative also greater than or equal to zero. So C greater than zero is the vertical line here, and greater than zero would be positive, so we're to this side of the line, and V being greater than zero is up this direction, so you can see that our solution space is really this closed space in here. So if we pick any solution, since these were included the equals, any solution on these boundary lines or in this space would make it true. If we wanted to check our answer, we could pick a solution that is in this space. So let's look at if we picked 3, 3. We could check, does it make the inequalities true? So I've got that on the next slide. So I'm putting these two solutions into each inequality, and we see that the cars plus vans less than or equal to 8 is true, and the passenger inequality uh, also comes out to be true. So that's a solution. Now there are an infinite number of solutions we could pick. Now since this is a real-world application, we would only be picking the solutions in here that are on the grid because we need an integer number of cars and vans. So we, as we can see though, there are lots of solutions that we could pick. So let's practice a couple other examples. These won't be done in the context of a word problem or an application problem, but we're going to practice the skill. So we need to graph here our first inequality. So this is in the y equals mx plus b format. So we have our y-intercept for the first inequality at negative 1, and we have a slope of 2, so up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, 1 over 2. We could go backwards. So again, we have our boundary line coming through here. And since the y is on the left, we can shade by shading down. So we are over in this area here. Now let's do the second inequality. Now when you do these, these, do these on your own, if you have uh, colored pencils or two colored inks, when we have two equations, it's going to be easier to see the solutions. I'll do the next one uh, only in one color and give, show you a technique of how to see where the overlaps are. So here we've got a y-intercept at 5. And our slope is negative 1, so we're coming down this direction. And this one is greater than, so that's going to be above the line, so we're in this side. Now again, it, it's up here too in terms of that second inequality, but our solution is where they overlap. So I want you to, so I clearly know where the solution is, put a big bold S or something inside the area. Now if we looked at solutions, let's look at the meaning of this graph. If we picked points, we've got sort of four regions here. We've got this that has no shading, blue shading, red shading, and both shading. So the meaning of that, if we pick a point into this area, that point, it will not make either inequality true. So it makes none of them true. Points down here make the blue inequality true. Points up here make the red inequality true. And the points in here that had both shadings make both inequalities true, and those are the uh, solutions that we are looking for. Let's look at an example where we've got three inequalities here. Now remember to make sure we graph this one correctly. I'm going to write this with the y on the left side, so we're going to flip this inequality over. And I'll do this one entirely in black to show you how I do this to keep it organized. So let's graph this first inequality. We have a y-intercept at 1 and a slope of 2. So up 2 over 1. And we can go down to left 1 to go this direction. And this is a has the underscore, so we're going to do a, a solid line here. And we're going to shade below. So I'm going to do this shading in the vertical direction.
So let's do equation two. Now the line x equals five is a vertical line. Remember we're on a coordinate plane, so it's not just this point here, but it's a vertical line. And we have a strict inequality, so at x equals five we want a vertical dashed line here. You have to make sure your line stands out from this shading. And we are less than that. Values of x that are less than 5 are over here. So we're going to the left. So let's do that with a horizontal shade. Now, I don't have the ability here when I do this to make the shading lighter. So I don't have a, a pressure sensitive tablet here. So everything's just as bold. When you do it with here, make your lines bold and make your shading a light shade and it'll be it'll stand out easier than on my video here. Okay, our third inequality is this one, so we have a y intercept at two and a slope of one, so we're headed up this direction here. So we can draw that boundary. Again it's going to be a dashed line. And so we did a horizontal shade, a vertical shade, so let's do a uh, angled shade for this one. It's less than, so on this line we are shading on an angle. Oops, I went over the line there. Now we are looking for where we have the crosshatch in all three ways. So our solutions, let me outline it in red so we can see, our solutions are right in here. Down here we're bounded by this line here, coming up to where we meet here. Then we are bounded on this dashed line coming over to here. And then we are bounded down here, whoops, down here forever. And our solutions are in here. Again, yours won't probably look as messy as this. It's hard to write on the, the tablet I have here on the computer and also I would be doing these shading lines in a light, you know, with less pressure, a lighter color, so that the boundary lines show out, show up. Sorry. Our final thing here to wrap up the tutorial are a couple. Uh, there's a special circumstance. Let's quickly uh, graph these two inequalities. So we are, have a y-intercept of negative two and a slope of one. So we have this boundary line here and we are uh, below that, so we're down here. And this one, if we use hide and seek, our x-intercept is negative 2, our y-intercept is positive 2, so we have, I should do that in red, so we have this line here, and we can see those two lines are parallel. And if I pick the test point zero, 0, on this one to find which side to shade, so if I pick this as my test point, if I put 0 minus 0 is less than negative 4, that's false. So we have to shade over here. So where is the place that has uh, both kinds of shading, both red and blue? And the answer for this one is none. There is no place that has both shading. So for this particular system, we would want to write that there is no solution. So when we have parallel lines, if the shading goes the other directions, our solutions would be in this uh, middle area. But when the shading goes like this, where there's no overlap, we have no solution. So good luck as you uh, solve and graph your own uh, systems of inequalities. Thank <music> you.